Welcome, students, to another fabulous episode of Management Academy Podcasting. We have two students today. We have DVP and Zenic 9000. <laughs> Let's do this. Okay, we're on podcasting topics. Ah, voice is a little hoarse today. All right, Mr. Franchise, Ian Report from Hell. Hmm, let's see here. All right, let's do this. Learninator. Why is Learninator even in here? I have no idea. You didn't state your expectation that you specifically wanted her to apologize. He didn't state his expectation. You didn't pay attention. Don't post rude comments on my wall. If you're going to post on my wall, I expect you to be friendly. Okay, so he's giving advice to uh, franchise on his EM report, but he's not paying attention to the to the uh, expectation. I think you want him to be more specific. Something like that. Yeah. Okay, punishing by ridicule, Amy. Da da da. Okay, so let's see. And then uh, franchise actually tried tried your method where you told her to fuck off. <laughs> All right, let's see what's going. Uh, that's my fake argument. Okay, so let's go back to franchise's real argument. This one is a quickie that happened on Failbook. Fuck, I hate gay book. This is like having a relationship over text message. It's the worst possible idea ever. I don't know why people do it, but trapped in the computer age, so let's let's take it. I posted a status update. Fuck. I wrote Dear Diary. <laughs> Fraternity life begins. Will I remember tonight? Probably not. Other people comment. Girl I've known since middle school, who I do not communicate with regularly, replies... Amy, lol, what? <laughs> Did you just turn 21? Punishing by ridicule. Yeah, that's correct. Zanuck, wake the fuck up. Hmm? Oh. Huh? Huh? <laughs> huh? Punishing by ridicule. What are you doing over there, Zanuck? I, I, don't, I don't know, I just, my, my brain just instantly went off in that moment. Uh, punishing by ridicule? Yeah, I'd say it's punishing by ridicule. Alright, good. Who else is in class here? Oh, Mr. Kerber, he makes his first appearance. Bogler oh, Jr. Bogler Jr., come back. <laughs> Where'd Bogler Jr. go? Bogler Jr., are you there? Hello? That was a cute robe you had on. I liked it. Uh, yeah, I forgot to block my... Yeah, it's too late now. <laughs> All right, here we go. Um... Oh, let's see here. Good comeback. Yeah, please uh, excuse my eating. It's dinner time and... Don't worry about it. Just eat your food. All right. He looks like Bogler Jr. All right, come back. Good, wait. Wait, 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 wait. Go back. Uh, I see a response the next day. Okay, so he sees a response the next day and he writes... Oh, that's him. He's responding. Lol, what? They both love lol, what? Lol, what? Did you just turn 50? Punishing by ridicule. DBP. I agree with that. Punishing by ridicule. DBP, yeah, what are I you agree doing? with that. Yeah, okay. Care Bear? Yes, I agree too. Amy, good. Come back. Have a good time. Uh, that's not... Rewarding by mind. acceptance. No. I, I Actually, it could be. It could go either way because she could be saying that sarcastically. But, uh, yeah, let's just go with reward by acceptance. I'm not going to try to read it. Zenic? I I, I want to say punishing by sarcasm because I mean when I read that I have in in my head there's I feel like there's absolutely no way that it could not be sarcastic. Yeah, Mister Care Bear. Yeah, I agree. It's sarcastic. Obviously, good comeback. What is she congratulating him on his rip on her? Good comeback. Good job. That was the best comeback ever. So punishing by ridicule. obviously she's punishing by ridicule. Sarcasm, etc. Good comeback. Have a good time. What, is she congratulating his comeback? Come on. Uh, I then had Paperclip come over. He brought up the comment that was made by Amy. He said that it was rude of her to publicly ridicule me, and I agreed. Then I proceeded to delete the comment post between her and I. I sent to her as I sent her a PM. Again, they're having this bullshit conversation on Facebook, which is a complete fail in the first place. Whenever you're talking to somebody, especially a girl, you should be having that conversation in person, over the telephone if possible, but not on text message, not on Facebook. So many possibilities for miscommunication, misunderstanding, etc., and girls are the masters of miscommunication. So Facebook, Failbook, Gaybook, MySpace, um, text message always creates problems for girls, and for you, 
by association. Don't post rude comments on my wall, Mr. Franchise says. If you're going to post on my wall, I expect them to be friendly. Stating expectation and punishing by scolding. Mm-hmm. I'm going to agree with that. Yeah, punishing by scolding and stating expectation. That's right. Sexy robe guy. What do you think? I'm not sure how he's ignoring her. What? Mean, what do you mean, wait, ignoring? Wait, wait, wait. Where, where does it say ignoring? Punishing by scolding says, and stating expectation. No, I'm reading, don't post rude comment on my wall. Yes. And then it says, punishing by ignoring. It says, punishing by scolding. Where you're, you're too far, you're two lines down. Go up one. Uh, go up two lines. Ah, uh, yes. Okay, okay, I see. I agree. Okay. Yes. Amy, point taken. I will never joke with you. Punishing by enforcing consequences. Uh... Punishing, but punishing with ridicule is what should be is what should be there. I will never joke with you. That's sarcasm. Mm. I don't know what to make of this one, actually. Sexy robe guy. Uh, yeah, I agree. It's a punishment. I, I mean, maybe she's sarcastic, but yeah, I think it's okay. Obviously, it's sarcasm. She's saying, I will never joke with you, implying that he is a loser who can't take a joke. Mm, Yeah. Is she saying that she'll never joke with him again? What's that mean if she says she's never going to joke with him again? You're too much of a bitch to take a joke. Yeah. Obviously, it's saying that. I will never joke with you. If you are never joking with a person, that implies you don't like the person. And that implies that what she was saying was a joke, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. So she's making an excuse. She's making an excuse for her bitch behavior. Yep. yep. Uh, okay. Franchise says, don't post rude comments on my wall. Uh, punishing by ignoring, restating expectation. Punishing by rejection and restating expectations. What should be there? Speak up, DBP. Punishing by rejection... And restating expectations, what should be there? Mm. I have to like scream into my mic so you guys can hear. Yes, thank you. Uh, with this one, I'm not sure again. I don't post two comments on my wall. Obviously, he's restating his expectation. But I almost want to agree with him that he's ignoring what she said. That's it, honestly, my scolding. Actually, not rejection. Okay, I don't see any punishment here. I only see him restating his expectation. Don't post rude comments on my wall. It's like he's scolding her. It's like don't he's post kidding. rude comments. That's a scolding. Yeah. You could. Uh, okay. It'll be a reject. It could be a rejection. It could be. But I would go with scolding either one. Um, okay. Or uh, punishing by ignoring because she, he's saying she's saying I will never joke with you again. He's doing something good because he's like, not acknowledging her bitch comment by saying uh, don't. Uh, He's pointing to her behavior, basically. Yeah, I wouldn't put punishing by ignoring because he's still basically scolding there. Um, if he was punishing by ignoring, she'd have to be accusing him of something or pointing to his bad behavior. Well, she is actually pointing to his bad behavior, but she's doing it in a very indirect way. She's implying he can't take a joke, so he's the problem. Like, he's so sensitive. So in he's a sense, in a sense, he is correct in saying he's not acknowledging that by saying he's he's not going, no, I could take a joke. Like, if he wasn't ignoring... He would say, no, I can take a joke. You're just being rude. So in that, in that sense, he would be acknowledging her uh, her argument, her expectation by saying, um, you know, she's implying you can't take a joke. I will never joke with you. So she's indirectly pointing to him as the problem, right? I will never yeah. joke with you, meaning you're somebody who can't take a joke. And if he said, no, it's not that I can't take a joke. It's that you're being rude. He's acknowledging her expectation, which is a mistake. For somebody to be a bitch like this, you should treat their expectations like trash. So in this case, he did he is ignoring her expectation. So you could either you could look at it either way. You could say he's punishing by ignoring, by not acknowledging her expectation and not saying, No, I can't it's not that I can't take a joke, it's that you're being rude. Then he would be acknowledging her expectation, but he's just going back and saying, Don't post rude comments on my wall. Again, pointing he's doing the correct thing by pointing to her bad behavior. That's the main point you want to take away here. So whether you want to put punishing by ignoring, which is the good thing that he's doing, he's not acknowledging her expectation, or punishing by scolding, just looking at what he's doing is scolding. Either one is correct. But 
the good thing to note is the point that he's not acknowledging her expectation. You guys all see that? Yes. Yes. Sexy robe guy, you see that? Yes, yes. What are you doing yeah, over there, sexy? I'm response because my mic is mute. Okay, gotcha. So, so you don't hear my... I hear you. Point okay. taken, I will never joke you. Don't post your comments on my wall. Amy, I didn't. I was joking. Punishing by disagreeing is in the brackets, and he's right. Yep, I agree with that. Punishing by disagreeing. Justifying? Justifying herself, she was saying. We don't care about her just joking. Do we care about her justifying, uh, Mr. Kerber? Uh, no, we don't. Why not? No, we only care about our justification. Why don't we care about her justifying? Because it doesn't matter to us. Is she justifying herself here? Yes. I think so. What? I think so. Yes, why don't we care about her justifying herself? Because it's like reward. Whose EM report is this? Uh, <laughs> franchise, I think. Uh, yeah, Mr. Franchise. Franchise, I think? Whose EM report is this? Mr. Franchise EM report is this. Right, so we don't care. This is okay. fran this is franchise's EM report. We don't care if she's justifying herself or not. It's not her EM report. We only care if we're justifying herself. All we care about in relation to the other person is what? Whether they're doing whether, what? Yeah, whether they are whether they are meeting our expectation or not. But more specific, whether they're doing what? Whether they fear our authority. More specific, not less specific. Okay. Whether they are yeah, doing what? Well, I don't know. I can't be more specific than... Yes, you can. Zenic, whether they are doing what? Whether they are rewarding you or punishing you. Yes, whether they are rewarding us or punishing us. Okay. That's the only thing we care about in relation to the other person. We don't care about their yes. justifications okay. or not. Yes, she is justifying herself. I didn't! I was joking! I would say this is not just disagreement. This is rejection. Because she is disagreeing with him, but she's like saying, no, nope, that's the wrong... Um, you're wrong on that. I was joking. So she's rejecting his expectation, but I'll take either. They, but disagreement co covers both. Uh, let's see here. Do I need to add anything about that? I didn't. I was joking. Punishing by disagreement. What is good about this, Zenic? Her response. Um, she, she's focusing on her behavior now. She's trying to justify herself. Ah, we've shifted. Instead of him being the problem, you can't take a joke. We have got to what? What's this called? Turning point. The turning point. How do we know we're at the turning point, DVP? She started justifying herself. She focused on her behavior. Yeah, she's focusing on her behavior. I didn't. I was joking. This is where you start turning a bitch around. This is a good job. All righty. Okay, so then he gets another response, I think, somewhere. Yeah, he... <laughs> Does he get another one somewhere? Oh, here we go. Learning yeah. here. Thank you for your quick blah, blah, blah. Nope. Where's the other one? Did we it's skip the one it? underneath. You know the one where you where you hit in the white box. You told him what to say. It's under that. He actually tries saying some of the things that you tell him to say. Oh, God. Well, let's see. Let's read plums. <laughs> <laughs> Plum, what part of don't act like a bitch are you having trouble with? Punishing by scolding. Are you other two what? students there? Yes. Wake yes. up. I agree. Yes, punishing by scolding. Agree with what? Agree with DVP that is punishing. How about you speak up? Are you in class? Yes, I am in class. Are you here to sit in class or are you here to respond in class? I am here to participate. Okay, then I want to hear you participate. If you can't take a joke, you need to get over yourself, Plum, Amy says. Punishing by... Punishing by rejection or punishing by scolding. Or punishing by disagreeing. It's one of those three. Hmm. I would have said punishing by disagreeing. I kind of want to, um, I don't know if that would work, actually. Yeah, I'll say punishing by, uh... Punishing by disagreeing is always going to work, because it's, whenever you have a clash, you're always disagreeing by default. That's very general. Yeah. So punishing by scolding. You need to get over yourself. Yeah, if you can't take a joke, you need to get over yourself. That's scolding. Or rejection, but, again, if you go disagreeing, you'll always be right, because whenever you're disagreeing with somebody or having a conflict of expectations, it's already implied that you're disagreeing. Yeah. Plum. Hey, cunt, fuck off. Thank you. <laughs> Smiley face. Uh, uh, punishing by scolding. Yeah, I'll say that to you. Punishing by scolding. Uh, punishing plum level. Plum level, punishing by scolding and ridicule. Yes. Thank you. Amy, why are you... Oh, how is that ridicule? Thank you. Oh, okay, okay. 
Uh, Smiley face. You're a loser. I'm a winner. Ha 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 ha. Thank you. Ridicule. Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> I got you now. I got you. Amy, why are you acting like such an asshole over a little joke? Uh, yeah, punishing by, yeah, punishing by scolding. Amy says, why are you acting like such an asshole over a little joke, Plum? Mm, he's punishing, but yeah, I'm just going to stick with scolding. I'm going to say punishing uh, I'm not sure what would fit Spit it, here. spit it out, Zenik. Punishing by guilting. I'm gonna say that. Oh shit, that's actually not my actual punishment. I changed mine. I agree with Zenik. Let's go, sexy robe guy. Uh, yeah, but I think I cannot. I I don't see her punishing you. I see it's, she's asking a question, so I can I I'm having a hard time. I I don't know how to do it in the EM guidelines. She's asking Pick a question. Pick one. So stating an expectation. She's stating. Do we care if she states an expectation? No, yeah. we can't. Whose EM report, report is this? Yeah. Whose so, EM report uh, is this? It's more like a reward. Whose EM report is this? This is Mr. Franchise's EM report, not Amy's, so we don't give up. No, it's Professor Plum's EM report. Ah, oh, 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 yeah. Shit. It's Professor Plum's EM report. What do we care about in relation to Professor Plum, Amy? What do we care about Amy's, beha- what Amy's doing? We care whether, we care whether Amy is rewarding you. Professor Plum or punishing him. That's it. We don't care if she's stating an expectation. What is yes. she doing? Right now, she's trying to guilt you. She's trying to... You just so, said she was rewarding me. Yeah, I thought so, but now when I... Now it, it became more clear. Why I'm are you smart. acting like such an asshole over a little yeah. joke, Mr. Care Bear? Because, because I don't justify myself to you, bitch. Why are you acting like such an asshole over a little joke, Mr. Care Bear? What is this? What goes in brackets? Let's go. Punishing by scolding. Punishing by scolding, punishing by rejection, uh, punishing by... Uh, what was the other one you just mentioned, Zenik? I said guilting. Punishing by guilting. I'll take all of them. Uh, Plum, cunt, didn't I just tell you to fuck off? I don't talk to rude cunts. Punishing by scolding. That's, yeah, just punishing by scolding. And I don't talk to rude yeah, that's just punishing by scolding. Yeah, I'll say punishing by scolding, too. Also, I think uh, it, it would be warranted to say punishing by uh, ignoring also, because he's not uh, acknowledging her. Uh, yes, that is comment. the important part to take away. I'm not focusing on my behavior. I'm focusing on her behavior. That is a very crucial point to take away here. No yes. justification. I, too, agree that it's a punishment, maybe by a rejection. Okay, I would go further than rejection, but all right, we'll, we'll accept that. Amy, but I wasn't being rude. I was just joking, bro. Punishing by, uh, punishing by disagreement or punishing by rejection, one of those two. Well, punishing by disagreement applies to pretty much everything, so punishing by rejection. Yeah, I'll say punishing by rejection, too. Punishment, definitely. Well, we got punishment. Good job, Kerber. Now what? Yeah, by rejection or by disagreeing. Well, pick one. I pick rejection. Okay, I pick rejection too. But I wasn't being rude. I was just joking. What's good here, Mr. Kerber? It's good that she's trying to justify herself. What are we at? So we are at point two or some turning point. We're we're close. Yes, we're at a turning point. We're getting close here. Yeah. Plum, once again, fuck off, rude cunt. When you can learn how to not act like a rude cunt, you can talk to me then. Punishing by scolding. Yep, punishing by scolding. Yes, again, punishing by rejection and stating your expectation. Ah, stating my expectation, directing her. When you can not act like, when you can learn how to not act like a rude cunt, you can talk to me then. So, I'm directing her. I could also say, you need to be civil when you talk to me. There's, there's different ways I could say it. I'm just saying it in a harsher way. When you can learn how to not act like a rude cunt, you could talk to me. Or I could also say, when you learn how to be civil, you could talk to me. There's different ways to say it. I just choose to say it in a harsher way. Uh, once again, fuck off, rude cunt. Uh, so I'm scolding here, and then I'm also trying to direct behavior. Okay, so, uh, again, punishing my scolding, and you could put stating expectation. Uh, let's see here. Amy. Okay, jeez. Don't get so uptight. I'm sorry. Uh, rewarding with apology. Well, he's rewarding. Yeah, rewarding with apology. I would say punishing by sarcasm. 
Yeah, she's been like, okay, geez, don't be so uptight, Professor Plum. So it's not an apology. Yeah, that's a mixed bag. Because I, I kind of want to say uh, that it's punishment by um, negative association because she's like associating your expectation with you being uptight. But she's also rewarding with an apology at the same time. But it's kind of, it's not genuine because she also has that punishing. Let's go with overall. We want to put overall. What do we put in the brackets? She punishing, rewarding? Rewarding. I say punishing. I would say rewarding. I'm going to go with punishing because I'm not getting my expectation met. Is my expectation for her to tell me I'm uptight? She's obviously rejecting or disagreeing with me. She's pointing to my behavior. When she's pointing to my behavior as the problem, it's not an apology. I'm sorry that you're an idiot. Is that an apology? No. I'm sorry you're uptight. Is that an apology? No. Nope. So is that a reward? I'm no. sorry you're such an asshole. Is that rewarding me? No. No. What is it? It's a punishment. Okay, geez, don't get so tight. I'm sorry. Punishment by rejection, scolding, negative association. She's associating me with an uptight person, right? Yep. Plum. That was not an apology, you rude cunt. Fuck off until you learn some manners. I don't want to talk to any rude cunts. Punishing by scolding and setting expectations. Well, yeah, setting expectations. Fuck off until you learn some manners. <sighs> yeah, I'll agree with that. Punishing by scolding, setting expectations. Agree too. Punishing agree. by scolding and setting an expectation. What's another way I could state that? Um, my expectation. You could just, Mr. You Care Bear. Bear. Yes. What's another way I could state my expectation? You could say, please apologize again. Yeah, I could say, please apologize again, or apologize in a, in a manner, in a manner that doesn't blame me, or, um, that's not a sincere apology. You need to be sincere when you apologize, or you need to take responsibility for yourself when you apologize and don't blame other people. I just happen yeah, to say it in a rude way. Fuck off until you learn some manners. So there's many ways to state this. From very harsh to more uh, civil and less punishing. So there's different ways to state it. I just I happen to value my expectations very, 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 very much. So I'm very insulted when people don't meet my expectations, especially chicks. So I'm especially harsh with them. Uh, Amy, what is wrong with my apology? Punishing by rejecting... Or punishing by disagreeing. I'm saying a reward because she's trying to meet your expectation. Mm, I disagree with that. I think it's still punishing because she's disagreeing with your expectation. But this is good again because she's focusing on her behavior again. Well, she's not really. She's not saying you're wrong. She's saying what is wrong. Tell me what to do. She's like asking you to tell her what to do so she can meet your expectation. Mm. So I, 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 I think it's a reward. I just don't know what kind of reward. I mean, it's not like she's, you know. She, she's trying to meet his expectations. She just wants to know how to do it. Mm-hmm. She's like a deer caught in the headlights. The, the favorite analogy used around here. <laughs> I still want to say it's uh, punishment by disagreement, though. Yeah, it's punishment to me, too. Nope, BBP's right. She's trying to meet my expectation. What is wrong with my apology? She's asking how is my apology wrong. She wants to know how she can fix it. She doesn't think her apology is wrong. But she's trying to meet my expectation. What is wrong with my apology? You could take it two ways. You could take this as a punishment. Um, but uh, just because of context, I'm going to take it as – and I wrote this. <laughs> I'm going to take it as a, a reward, meaning she's trying to meet – like she doesn't know what's wrong with her apology. She doesn't realize she is she is still blaming me in the apology. You could take it one of either ways. Uh, so you, like I said, I will uh, – this is iffy. What is wrong with my apology? She still doesn't believe it's wrong, so she's still rejecting my expectation. Or you could say, what is wrong with my apology? How do I meet your expectation? That's the crucial point here. She's trying to meet my um, expectation. Uh, you can't mind read, so I'll take either answer in this case. But uh, the key point is she's trying to meet my expectation here, or at least it seems like it because she's not – she's asking what is wrong with my apology versus you're wrong and uh, you're being an asshole. She's now focusing on her behavior. So this is a good point. Um, she's justifying herself. She's trying to justify herself or reason with me. So this is a reward. What is wrong with my apology? She's direct. She's focusing on her behavior. So again, a reward. So how would this fit in terms of EM terminology? I would say to say it's a reward. I would say she's rewarding me by justification, rewarding me with uh, trying to justify herself. What is so wrong? This is like an ex- one of those she's reasoning. 
Yeah, and she's reasoning. She's trying to say, what's wrong? How do I fix it? Okay. She's focused okay. on her. She's focused on her and justifying herself. So that's a reward when you're trying to justify yourself. Whenever you're trying to justify yourself, it's a reward. Welcome to class, Mr. Shy Guy. What's up, bro? What's up, bro? <laughs> What's up, bro? What is up, bro? I almost didn't uh, make it to class today, but I definitely wanted to at least uh, join before the class is over. Sweet. What's up, bro? <laughs> What's up, bro? What are we looking at? A EM Ready report? report? Very nice. Okay, let's see here. Where are we, Plum? Don't act like a cunt when you apologize. Either be sincere or don't bother. Uh, punishing by scolding. Yeah, just punishing by scolding. Punishing by scolding and restating your expectation. Yes. 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 Yeah, I'll agree with Mr. Care about here. Punishing by scolding and restating the expectation. I don't think that he's receiving an expectation. I think he's just saying, like, either be sincere or don't bother. That doesn't seem like it's you're seeing an expectation. It sounds like you're just scolding him. Either be sincere or don't bother. That isn't an expectation. I don't expect her to be sincere. Well, the first part could be uh, a same expectation, too. Don't act like a cunt when you apologize. Right. So that's an expectation, too. Well, true. Um, I would say, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll agree with either. Then I'll say... Punishing by scolding, but definitely there's an expectation in there. Don't act like a cunt when you apologize. Either be sincere or don't bother. So I'm, t I'm giving her a direction to be s either be sincere, do it this way, or fuck off. Okay. So I'm trying to tell her to indicate to be sincere when she apologizes. So you're giving her direction. So that's giving her direction. Yeah. Okay. Same with don't act like a cunt, but that's more vague. It's telling her not what not to do, but it's not telling well, her what like, to do. Like, it's basically like an insult. So it's like a. It's telling her what not to do. It's yeah. not telling her what to do. Either be sincere is telling her what to do. Okay. Amy, fine. I'm sorry for posting something rude on your wall. Happy. Punishing. Well, that's definitely a punishment. Uh, <laughs> punishing by. Uh, I don't know what to put there. Hmm. Punishing by rejection. Wake up, people. Wake up. Punishing by rejection. That is my final answer. I'll say punishing by rejection as well. Yeah. Punishing by rejection. Uh, yeah, punishing by rejection. Punishing by um, happy? Are you happy? You happy, you loser? Oh, punishing by sarcasm. Yeah. Punishing by ridicule. You happy, oh, okay. you little child. You need such a, an apology. You happy? <laughs> Fine. Since you're such a little kid. Sorry for posting rude stuff on your wall. You happy now? You little tyrant? Does that make it clearer? Yeah. Yeah, I'm just yeah. laughing at the next part where you say, Are you fucking deaf? This no, is you rude cunt. Plum says, I just fucking told you not to act like a rude cunt when you apologize. Are you fucking deaf? This is over Facebook. Over Facebook. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's punishing by uh, punishing by scolding and punishing by ridicule. Are you fucking deaf? Yeah, I, I agree entirely. Punishing by scolding yeah. and punishing by ridicule. Punishing by rejection because you said no, and then also punishing by ridicule or whatever. Or whatever okay. is not a choice. Yeah, punishing by rejection. And then restating your expectation. I just fucking told you blah, blah, blah. And then fucking uh, punishing by a ridicule. Yeah, all in the same oh, ballpark. Great. As long as you get the point that there's punishment going on, that not meeting my expectation. Amy, I don't know what she wants, sad face. <laughs> rewarding with... Huh. I think that... Is this a reward? Yeah, she's basically just asking you for directions. Rewarding with justification. Yeah, I'll go with that too. I feel like this is she's trying to uh, learn how she can appease you. Please, it's like it's like in the middle. It's not really a, a reward or a punishment. It's kind of like a like a very like a blank statement almost. Is there a blank statement in social interaction? No, I don't know. I don't know how to classify that. Yeah, there's no. Let me give reward. you a hint. There's no neutral here. I don't think it's a reward though, because she's not. She's not. Um, you know, apologizing or she's not. Is she, she trying to justify herself? Is she providing an explanation for herself? No. No, she's not really explaining herself. She's just saying, please, tell me what to do. 
Is she's that like, a justification? Like, yeah, she's like, she's like telling me, she's like, she basically. Says, I hey, don't know what you want. Is she trying to justify herself? Yeah. Is that a reward when people try to justify themselves? Yes. Yes. So what should it be? Rewarding by justification. There you go. Rewarding by justification. Whenever somebody's trying to explain themselves, their behavior, etc., they're trying to reason with you. They are respecting you. If they don't respect you, they don't fear your authority, they don't have to justify themselves. They're going to blame you. But she's focusing on her behavior. I don't know what you want. I don't know how to behave the way you want me to behave. I'm justifying myself. Always a reward when people are trying to justify themselves. Plum, first of all, stop acting like a rude cunt. Second, when you apologize, you don't include your rude cunt attitude. You say, I'm sorry for what I said. I was being a rude cunt. That is how you make a sincere apology. Uh, <laughs> punishing by ridicule, punishing by scolding, and then punishing and uh, saying expectation. Yep, I'll agree with that. Uh, yeah. For me, yeah. it's foremost setting your expectation, and uh, the punishing part is secondary. <laughs> I mean, you are punishing her. You are punishing her. Uh... The punishing part is primary. It's not secondary. The expectation is already implied from this whole conversation. So if you remove the punishment and don't say the expectation, you're not going to get the expectation met. So the punishing is primary here. There's also um, punishment by negative association here. Because when, when you say you don't include your rude cunt attitude, you're like uh, you're associating her attitude with being a rude cunt. Yes, punishing my negative association. I always forget that one. Amy, I'm sorry for what I said. I was being a rude cunt. Rewarding with submission. Or meeting expectation. Either one. Yeah. Finish line. I'll accept yeah. finish line. I'll accept reward. I'll accept trophy. See, Plum, see, that's better. Now you're not acting like a rude cunt. And now I have a boner because you've gone from rude cunt to nice girl. Penis. Penis. And, uh, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's real... Rewarding with praise or rewarding with approval. Yep, I'd say rewarding with attention, rewarding with praise. There's no rewarding with approval. We got rid of that. Uh, oh, we do? Please. Read the updated notes. <clears throat> All right. Are you there, shy guy? Yeah. What I are did. you doing? I'm just writing down some notes. Are you participating in class or are you writing down notes? I'm Writing down notes. You can write down notes and just listen to the podcast. I don't want you in class if you're just writing down notes. You can just listen to the podcast and write down notes. All right. No, I, I agree with that. Uh, it's definitely rewarding with praise because you're, she finally met your expectations. Amy, haha, I want to suck your car. Rewarding with blowjob. Rewarding with blowjob, yes. Okay. <laughs> Next. All right. So that's that. Next one. Delete. 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 Ooh, you got the new, newest banner. Yeah, this is the best oh, banner man. so far. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was pretty good, too, yeah, when I saw it. <laughs> so we got Underground Railroad sort of theme. Yeah, yeah. So it's the Underground Railroad for your balls. It's got a squirrel with balls. It's got a black dude. He's in chains. <laughs> banner Academy. The colors are beautiful. It's just an all-around amazing banner. I just can't yes. stop staring at it. It's my only, only banner I like on here. Uh, let's see here. Next one. Open. Sesame. Oh, no. Almost closed it. Oh, I did close it. Motherfucker. Open. Deed. Okay, how travel applies the principles. Create a longer first met. Oh, did we cover this? I thought we covered this. This was Travo's online profile. I'm pretty sure we covered this. Hmm. Create a longer first message. Talk about yourself more. Introduce your expectations. I think you got you were covering this. You were in the middle of covering this. Yeah, okay, so let's just recap real quick. Uh, online profile. Again, you want to get the girl on the phone as quickly as possible. But you got to create a longer first message. Anything like, sup, bro, if you want to be super shy guy and say, sup, bro, you're going to fail. And it says, hey, what's up? How's it going? And it, winking crap, sending her a wink, all that crap that just is like, hey, hello, get rid of it completely because she's already getting a thousand what's up, hellos, how's it going from super shy guy. So if you want to get past that, you have to have a longer first message, which is stimulating so that she wants to respond. So talk about yourself more. Stimulate. Lead the conversation. Introduce your expectations. I like that you're doing this. I hate it when chicks do this. I like this. I don't like this. Introduce your expectations early. Oh, I'm glad you work out. I don't like fat chicks. I don't like chicks that don't work out. 
Or can you cook? I want to make sure that somebody can cook or make something, right? Something where you let somebody know you have expectations and they should be met. This means what if you have expectations, Mr. Care Bear? If I, if I have expectations, this means I'm an authoritative guy. Yes, you can enforce your expectations. This means you can do what, Zenik? Uh, provide direction. Which means you can do what ultimately? Um, What's attractive to people? Order. So that means you can do what? Create order. Yes. If you have expectations, this means you can create order to get those expectations met. Don't talk about being a shy dork. In here, we always talk about in your EM reports, yes, talk all about being a shy dork. Why not in your message to this chick? Because... Well, let's see what Travo said originally. He said... What the hell did he say? Where's Travo? All right. Nope, that's summer job. Where's the fucking... Where is the... Where is the... My dating. Okay, I like... I like how you can be candid and cute and use little metaphors to describe yourself as a stray puzzle piece because you don't fit anywhere. Let's see. Low maintenance. Check. Honest. Check. Likes being outdoors. Check. Okay, this ver- it's an indirect way of stating his expectations, but this is good. He's saying check. It's on my checklist of expectations. He can even be more forward and talk about his expectations like, yeah, I like that you're outdoors. My ch- a girl I go out with has to be able to do this. Again, standards and expectations. Oh, and you're shy around guys, too. I have such a sweet tooth for shy girls. Ah, oh, this is cool. He likes shy girls. This is his expectation. They just make my heart melt. Don't worry about it, though. Most guys, including me, are pretty shy around girls, too. Like, seriously, what's wrong with that, Zenik? Um, it's like... It's good for an EM post, I mean, for an ex- expression post, but why not for a message to a chick? Because it, it kind of starts to make him seem like he's not as authoritative it's just kind of unattractive in that way. Unattractive in what way? That it makes him seem less authoritative when he says stuff like that. It makes him like... He when can he himself. say stuff like that? In person. Wrong. When can when, he say well, stuff like that, Mr. Shy Guy? See, I don't, I don't know why, because... I would assume that saying something like that is, I mean, if that's his reaction, if that, I mean, if that's his... Yeah, we always talk about, go ahead, put that in your yeah, expression post. Yeah, why can't he say that right here? Yeah, why can't he say that right here? I don't know, I would think that would be okay. And, and, I mean, that's what, he, what he's thinking, if that's how he feels, then there's no problem with him. Yeah. I, mean, I guess it's how he says it. Why can't he do it, Mr. Care Bear? Uh, he left. Oh, why can't he do it, Zenik? Uh, I'd say because it's... Uh, it's not attractive. He can't do it because he doesn't have. You can do it in person. an EM po- in an expression post, and it's attractive. Why can't he do it here? Because he doesn't have a um, emotional investment. From he her hasn't name. done what provided enough positive incentive. He hasn't done what established his authority. Ah, he hasn't established his authority, and as we all know, or most of us don't know, text is very passive. What can't you do in a text message? You can't, like, uh, enunciate words and speak authority. You can't do what? Words. When she goes, oh, you're a shy fag? You can't do what? You can't... Pu- your punishments aren't as harsh with her. You can't do what? Because she thinks that you write this, and then she thinks, oh, you're a shy fag? You can't do what? Shy guy? You're not... You can't convey your reaction appropriately through just text. You have to... She no, goes, oh, you no. go, you're a super shy guy, and you convey your reaction appropriately, and she says, oh, you're a shy fag, you can't do what? You can't really punish. I don't know. That's you can't create order. I'm like stuck on this one. Well, Mr. Shy Guy was very close right there. You can't enforce your expectations. Yeah, you can't enforce your expectations. This is very passive. She's You say it. She reads it. She thinks, oh, you're a shy fag. Are you able to respond to that? No, are you no. able to manage her reaction? You can text her back. but it's You can text her back, text. but she might not yeah. even fucking text you. Yeah. So it's very passive here. So, number one, you can't manage a bad reaction. So it's not good. You can do this in person because then you could, if she doesn't like it, you can immediately scold her. You can immediately punish her. But over text, you can't. And also, as Zenik mentioned, you're super shy around girls, too. That implies you have no authority. Why are you shy around girls? Why are you shy, Zenik? 
Because if you're shy around girls, it shows that you value their expectation more. Yeah. Why am I not shy around girls? Because you value your expectations more than yeah, theirs. Yeah, I value my expectations. What does that say about me versus what it says about you? That uh, you can lead them and you can provide order. Right. Whereas I can't. What if you say, tell me, tell this girl you're shy. Hello? What if what? Zenek, tell this girl you're shy. Uh, I'm shy. Does he sound shy, DBP? No. Uh, Mr. Shy Guy, does he sound shy? Uh, a little bit. Yeah, he sounds shy to me. What if I say, hey, I'm super shy around girls. Do I sound shy? <laughs> hmm. Mr. Shy Guy, do I sound shy? You, a little bit. Right now you did, a little bit, yeah. Yeah, I'm super shy around girls. Um, uh, Zenic, do I sound shy? Yeah, you sounded shy there. Sound a little shy, right? Um, yeah. not really. Not really. That's not how a shy guy's gonna speak. Huh. Maybe it sounds shy to you just because you're listening to the words. It's not really that shy. If you want to hear a shy guy, you can listen to Travo. That guy sounds shy. <laughs> not even super shy guys sound shy. Even BZS doesn't sound shy. There's authoritative tone. It's a statement. I'm shy around girls. Uh, but I can manage the reaction to what she says. Oh, you're one of those shy dorks. I can say, what are you, a freaking loser? Or I can say, oh, stop being retarded. What does that tell her? BZS? That you're, that you're not gonna tolerate that. No, what does that tell her, Zenic? Uh, it tells her that you value your expectations. What does that tell her, DBP? Tells her what not to do. What does that tell her? Uh, who's the guy that just joined? I don't even know. That paper tells paperclip. Paperclip. That tells her I'm not shy. No. Oh. It tells her I'm in charge. Whenever I punish, that tells her I'm in charge. It tells her that I'm the opposite of shy. Do shy people punish other people? No. Nope. No. If I say I, I suck with women, I'm not good with women. Do I suck with women? BZS, does that say I suck with women? Wait, say that again. I suck with women. I'm not good with women. Just by saying it? Yeah. I, I mean, from what I know about you, you're not. I'm not but saying you, you don't know them. about me. You say you just hear it. I just tell you I suck with women. I'm not good with women. Then I would say <laughs> you suck with women because you're telling me you suck with women. Okay. Zanuck, I suck with women. I'm not good with women. What does that tell you? Uh, it tells me that you're open with yourself. Tells me I'm open. Possibly not good with women. Authoritative tone. Uh, what else? Open. Yes, very open. Do people that suck with women, are, are they generally open? No, not really. Uh, so there's a, already a problem with what I'm saying. Well, not a problem, but there's already like a uh, underlying message. Now she says, oh, you're a nerdy guy. You, you, you obviously suck with women. You're a nerdy guy. Yeah, you're probably a nerdy guy. I say, oh, don't be retarded. Don't be ridiculous. What are you, retarded? Pay attention. What does that tell her? Tells her that you don't really suck with women. Yeah, tells her I really don't suck with women. Why, why does that tell you I, I don't really suck with women? Because you're punishing you care about your expectations and you're punishing her. Shy guys don't do that. Because guys that don't suck with women don't what? They don't punish. punish. They don't punish. So does it matter what I say? No. No. What if I come up to her and say, hey, did you know it's green? It's it's sunny outside? Is that a good pickup line, um, Mr. Shy Guy? <laughs> yes, that's fine. I mean, it's, it's an observation. Paperclip. Is that a good pickup line to say, hey, it's sunny outside? I just realized that. <laughs> Paperclip. Okay, so, I, I don't even understand what you mean by pickup line. You know what a pickup line is? Yeah, but they don't work. You Did you, do you understand the question I just said then? Hey, it's sunny outside. Is that a good pickup line? No. Zenic. I say, hey, it's sunny outside. Is that a good pickup line? No. What if she says, yeah, good for you? And I say, yeah, it is good for me. I like it when it's sunny. Hmm. It's a little better. It's still, it's still, it still sucks, but it's a little better. DVP? Yeah, it sucks, but it's better than nothing. No, I'm responding to her. I say, it's sunny outside. And she goes, good for you. And I say, yeah, it's good for me. It is sunny outside. I like it when it's sunny outside. So what? Actually, well, you're ignoring what her expectation. You're ignoring her, what she's doing. What's that mean, Zenek? When I ignore her, what am I doing? Oh. You're, you're punishing her. 
So is that a good pickup line now? No, it still sucks. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to say it's better because it, it, you're, uh, I mean, yeah, it's, the actual content is kind of stupid, but the way you said it, it makes you come off as someone who uh, is authoritative. Yeah, it's a great pickup line because what? Why is it a great pickup line? Sh- super shy guy? It shows that you care about your expectations. Because you're, you're saying, when she's, she's telling you, oh, good for you, and you reply, yeah, it is good for me. It's almost like you're ridiculing her response in a way, like you're punishing her. Yeah, I am so punishing her. Saying. What's that mean if I'm punishing her? It means you can, it means you're enforcing your expectations. And What's that mean if I enforce my expectations? Yeah, you, you know how to get your needs met. I'm establishing what? Authority. What's that mean if I can establish authority? You can create order. Yeah, what's that mean if I can create order? You're getting your needs met. You can meet her needs. What does that mean if I can meet her needs and I can create order? What's that mean? You are attractive. Yeah. So does she like me now? No. <laughs> what about the positive well, you know, incentive? You need to- Give her a positive incentive by sharing your Zedek, does she crush. like me now? Yeah, I'll say she's probably coming around. Yeah, of course she likes me now. Because I've created order. What's attracted to people, Zenik? Order. Order. Is it a positive incentive to punish a girl? Yeah. You just said it wasn't. Yeah, but I mean... Okay, so... <clears throat> you're not giving her enough positive incentive for her to want to stay around. I've just started. Okay. You didn't like. You didn't directly say you're a bitch. That's not. It's not that much punishment where it's like gonna drive her away. I've let her know I have expectations. I punished her, and yeah. I've created order. Well, you don't have a relationship with her yet. You're just. We don't have a relationship yet. I'm just talking to her in the yeah. beginning. I'm just saying, hey, yeah, okay. sunny outside. Does she have enough incentive to give me a blowjob to get into no. a relationship? No. No. But I might have attraction. Yeah. I might just start. Now, what I do after that is where Paperclip has a problem because he's busy saying your hair is beautiful and your eyes are sparkling. What's Paperclip's problem, Zenik? I'm not, oh. <laughs> Putting, uh, he's giving too much positive incentive without uh, regard to whether he's getting any in return. What's his problem, BZS? There's no reciprocation. There's no. What's his just, problem, DVP? There's no punishment. There's no punishment. What does that mean if there's no punishment, DVP? You're afraid to enforce your expectations. What does that mean? Which means what? You can't establish your authority. Which means what? You can't create order. You, you can't, can't create order. order. Is it is dis, Are disorderly things attractive? No. No. Is it attractive when a girl's in charge of the relationship? Oh, nope. no. 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 So what's Paperclip's problem? I don't punish. DBP, what's Paperclip's problem? You can't create order. Which means what in relation to... Uh, or Which means what in the context of... Him and the girl. He can't establish his authority. Right, which means what? Uh, I, I don't know. You're all right there. Um, he, what about the relationship? He doesn't care about it. The relationship will break down. What about him and the relationship? <laughs> He's not getting his uh, own needs met. He, yeah, he can't meet both their needs and... Uh, what is he not doing in the relationship? He's not leading. Yeah, he's not leading the relationship. <laughs> to lead the relationship means you have to cut off bad directions. What does it mean if you're cutting off bad directions, shy guy? That you're providing a direction. You're what does it mean if you're cutting off directions, oh. Zenic? Uh, you're giving limitations. What does it mean if you're giving limitations, shy guy? You're providing order. What does it mean if you're providing order, you're, uh, you're uh, giving limitations, uh, paperclip? That means I'm leading their relationship towards order. DVP, what does it mean if you're providing limitations in your, uh... I'm providing order. Uh, you're... You become attractive. No, what does it mean if you're making limitations? You... You know where you're going. BZS, what does it mean if I'm I'm making limitations on you? You're... If I'm giving you limitations. Oh, you're... I don't know. Zanuck, what does it mean if I'm giving limitations? Um, I I don't know. You want an example of a limitation? Sure. Stop fucking around in class and pay attention. Did I give you a limitation? Yes. What does it mean uh, when I give you limitations, paperclip? You're not... I have less options, which means... I have one direction. BZS, what does it mean when I give you limitations? You're... You're punishing your... Yeah, I'm punishing. What do not people... Yet. What does that mean about people who punish, DVP? They're in charge. Which means what? That they can do what? They can they can lead the relationship. Yes, which means what? 
to get their expectations met. Yes, which means what? <laughs> get their needs met. Which means what? They can meet your needs. Which means what? They can <laughs> it's like a cycle. They can create what? Order. What is that? What are, what's, uh, uh, okay, they create order. What do we think about orderly people? Paperclip? Oh. Paperclip? <laughs> they're good. They're attractive. So why aren't you attractive? Because I am not making limitations. Which means you're not doing what? I am not punishing. Is incentive the problem? No. Is it incentive to punish a girl? Yes. How oh, does it give, yes. how does it give her well, incentive? By, I'm giving her limitations. Which you're, you which are, means you're doing what? I'm cre- I am punishing. Which means you're doing what? Giving her incentive. How are you giving her incentive? By, by leading the relationship. How does, how do you lead? By enforcing my expectations. How do you enforce your expectations? <laughs> Shit. By, by giving her, dire- or by punishing. What does punishing do? Uh, Shapes, uh, takes away, hold on, I wrote this down. What is punishing bad, you? I'm cutting out bad directions. What is, what does it happens, what does it mean when you cut off bad directions? I'm giving her limitations. What does it mean when you give her limitations? I am establishing my authority. What does it mean when you're establishing your authority? I am building a healthy relationship. What does it mean when you're building a healthy relationship? How do you build a healthy oh, relationship? I'm meeting her needs and she's meeting my needs. What does that mean when you're meeting her needs and she's meeting your needs? This is an awesome podcast. <laughs> he's yes. What does it mean when he's meeting her needs and she's meeting his needs? You have a relationship. What's a, how do you start a relationship? By create by giving incentive and punishment. How do you give That's incentive? Right you give incentive by expressing your rea- your candid reaction. Right. And. And by rewarding with praise and. And. Attention when it's merited and. If I punch you, if I punch you in the, if you uh, are running. If you are running at me with a knife and I punch you in the face, is that is that giving you incentive? No. Zenik, if you're running at me with a knife and I punch you in the face, is that giving you incentive? Yeah, I'd say so. What is it giving you incentive to do? It's giving me incentive to stop running at you with a fucking knife. Yeah. So what am I doing if I'm punching you in the face? You're, uh, you're giving me direction. You're punishing how, how, am I giving, uh, how am I giving you direction? By punishing me. What does that do when I punish you? It creates order. What do we know about orderly people? <laughs> They're attractive. So why is paperclip? Why aren't you attractive? Because I'm not orderly. You're giving people incentive, though. But I'm not punishing them. What does it mean when you punish them? I am. Giving, I'm creating order. How are you creating order? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I'm creating order by giving them limitations. What's the limitations do? It. Uh, Gives them one direction instead of many different directions. When you give person when a, when you give a person one direction, what does that create? It creates order. What do we know about order? We need it as human beings. Why do you need it? Because it's it's healthy. Okay, so we're attracted to healthy things. Because why aren't chicks responding to you, paperclip? Huh? Why aren't chicks responding to you? Because I thought you're giving them, I thought you're giving them incentive. Yeah, I'm giving them incentive, but I am not punishing them for not meeting my expectations. Is punishment incentive? Yeah. So I thought you were giving them incentive. I'm giving them positive incentive, but not negative incentive. What is what is negative incentive? You tell me what is negative incentive. What's positive negative incentive? Ins- what are you giving them? Okay, okay. Positive incentive is rewarding. Negative incentive is punishing. I am not giving a ne- negative incentive. Why do you need to give people negative incentive? So they can become orderly. So why aren't you creating a relationship then? Because I am not giving negative incentive. Which means you're not doing what? I am not punishing. Which means you're not doing what? I am not creating order in their life. You're not creating order. What does that mean if you're not creating order? I am not orderly. <laughs> what does that mean if you're not orderly? That I have no direction. What does it mean about you if you're not orderly? I, oh, I, I am not attractive. So why aren't girls attracted to you? Because I am not attractive. <laughs> <laughs> what? Why are girls not attracted to you? Because I am not orderly. How do you need to be orderly? 
by giving them negative incentive and positive incentive. Oh, so what and are I'm you giving? One, and I do, I'm only doing one and not both. Now are you clear? Yeah. So when people say, hey, bro, you're putting girls on a pedestal, what are you going to tell them? Hey, bro, I need to give them negative incentive. You need to say, hey, bro, that's meaningless. You need to say, I'm only giving them positive incentive and not negative incentive. Okay. Thank you. I need to give them positive incentive to do what? To reward. I need to give them positive incentive to do what, DVP? Uh, I need to give them positive incentive. <laughs> I need to give them positive incentive to do what, shy guy? To meet your expectations. I need to get them positive incentive to do what, Zenik? Uh, to get them to open up to you. So that they have a reason to meet your expectations. What's a positive incentive? Giving them a cookie. In terms of direction, what's a positive incentive? Oh, telling them what to do. Well, not telling them what to do. Yeah, telling them what to do. Uh, rewarding when they do something you approve of. Yeah. What's a positive incentive in relation to direction? What's a, okay, let me ask Let me ask it another way. What's a negative incentive in relation to a direction? Punishing them when they do something wrong. When they, when they stray from that direction you provided. What's a, what's a negative incentive in relation to – or what's it what's mean when I give a negative incentive in relation to direction? It cuts uh, off that direction. So yeah, me, what's it mean the other way? What's the other way when I'm giving them a positive incentive in relation to direction? Which direction to go in. Okay. You're rewarding them for something that they're, that they're doing right. When I'm – when I am giving somebody a positive incentive, it creates a direction for them. Okay, and then when I'm giving somebody a negative incentive, it removes a direction for them. Uh, let's state that better. How many directions are there to go, shy guy? There's infinite, infinite directions you could go in, but there's only one. You should only have one. Okay, so what does that tell you about all the other ones? That they're not a direction that you need to limit. Those other directions. They're bad directions. They're bad. They're the wrong way. How many right ways is there, Zenik? Only one. How many wrong ways is there, uh, Shy Guy? How many wrong directions? There's infinite amounts. How many right directions are there, Shy Guy? Just one right direction. Paperclip, how many wrong directions are there? An infinite, infinitive, infinite amount. How many right um, directions are there? One. So when I'm providing like negative incentive, what does that mean? You're removing a lot of the bad directions. So when I'm par- when I'm right. providing positive incentive, what does that mean? You're doing the same thing. DBP, how many directions are there? There are an infinite amount of directions. How many bad directions are there? An infinite amount of bad directions. How many good directions are there? There's only one. When I'm giving them negative incentive, what am I doing? You're removing the bad direction. When I'm giving them positive incentive, what am I doing? Giving them the one direction. Paperclip, how many bad, how many directions are there? There is an infinite amount of directions. How many bad directions are there? There is an infinite amount of bad directions. How many good directions are there? There is only one. When I'm giving them positive, or when I'm giving them negative incentive, what am I doing? You're removing the bad directions. When I'm giving them positive incentive, what am I doing? You're putting her on the right direction. DVP, can you repeat the answer again? I don't, I don't think I have the answer, but it's just giving her... Super shy guy, how many directions are there? There's an infinite amount of directions. How many bad directions? Infinite. How many good directions? Just one. What does it mean when I'm removing, or when I'm giving you negative incentive? You're removing all the dysfunction, all the bad directions. What does it mean when I'm giving you positive incentive? You're, you're, uh, basically rewarding for moving in a positive direction, or the good direction. Zenik, how many directions are there? There's an infinite amount of directions. How many bad directions? Also an infinite amount of bad directions. How many good directions? Only one. What does it mean when I'm giving negative incentive? You're removing bad directions. What does it mean when I'm giving positive incentive? You are also removing bad directions. Paperclip. Yes. How many directions are there? There is an infinite amount of How many of bad directions. directions are there? There is an infinite how amount of How many good directions? directions? There's one good direction. What does it mean when I'm giving negative incentive? You're removing bad directions. What does it mean when I'm giving positive incentive? You're also oh. removing bad directions. Eh. DBP, how many yeah. directions are there? An infinite amount, there's an infinite amount of directions. Bad directions are there? Infinite amounts. Good direction. 
One direction. What does it mean when I'm giving negative incentive? You're giving... Oh, you're... <laughs> You're removing all the bad directions. What does it mean when I'm giving positive incentive? <laughs> You're giving them the one direction. Ah. Uh, paperclip. How many directions Ready? are there? There is an infinite amount of directions. How many negative directions? Or there is an inf- how many bad directions are there? There is an infinite amount of bad directions. How many good directions are there? There's only one good direction. What does it mean when I'm giving negative incentive? You're giving them the right direction. Zenic. How many directions yes. are there? Infinite amount. How many bad directions? Infinite amounts. Good directions. One. What does it mean when I'm giving them negative incentive? <coughs> You're removing bad directions. What does it mean when I'm giving positive incentive? You're pushing them to go into the one right direction. Ah. BZS. How yes. many directions? There's infinite amounts. Bad directions. directions. Infinite. Good directions. Just one. What does it mean when I'm giving them negative incentive? You are removing all the dysfunctional directions. What does it mean when I'm giving them positive incentive? You are enforcing the right direction. Ah. Paper, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. What does it mean? How many directions? How many directions? There are an infinite amount of directions. Bad directions. There is an infinite amount of bad directions. Good direction. There's only one good direction. What does it mean when I'm giving negative incentive? You're, You're removing bad directions. What does it mean when I'm giving positive incentive? You are pushing them to the, toward the right direction. Oh, we finally graduated. Okay. Yeah. Let's go. All right. Uh, anything else here? Da, 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 da. Lazy. Oh. Okay. So, da, 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 ha. I like how you admit you overanalyze things. Da, da, da. That's pretty cute. Okay. Did we cover that? We covered that. What are the things that I say here? You are the guy who's leading the relationship. She can't, shy dorks can't lead a relationship. Also, don't make an original reply for every girl. Okay. So he's thinking he's going to, he sees one or two girls, and he's like, oh, I'm going to write it three paragraphs for this girl, three paragraphs for that girl. What's the problem? So much work. So much work. So much easier to just write a paragraph that just talks about you and talks about things you expect, and then one or two details or three details you grab out of a girl you like, you grab out of her, par- her profile. Like, say she mentions she likes surfing, and then you could put that in your in your form letter. Right, you can mention. Oh, I see Stacy. If she has a name, you can say her name, Stacy. That you like surfing there. That's cool because blah 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 blah. So something that specifically mentions something in her profile, so she thinks that you read it. She thinks this letter is personally directed to her and not to a thousand other girls like it is. So that'll save you work if you just cut and paste. Then you only have to write like one or two original things that address her profile versus having to write three entirely different paragraphs for every single girl. You'll wear yourself out. Keep it oh, simple. God damn it. Man of Academy devoured all of my podcast notes. Oh, so sad. Maybe you should take them in a notepad or something. You can back. You can press back on the browser. I can do that. Yeah, I did. It just took me back to the. Uh, that's sad. Oh. Well, live and learn. Okay, uh, you can listen to the podcast and retake notes again. Let's see. Yep. Next, next one. Last one. Oh, we got time for one more. Ready, Zenic? Yes, I'm ready. Yes, I'm ready. You ready to visit the Underground Railroad? (laughs) Yes. Okay, we're waiting. Next topic. Oh, there's a new banner. Yeah, there's a new banner. Cool. Okay. Oh, Fort Stronghold, EM report. All righty. Okay, there we go. All last week, I... Tried calling the girl I took out on a date the other week. I posted about it above, and it didn't go well. It didn't go so well, so I tried to call her on many occasions. I couldn't get through to her. Why couldn't he get through to her, paper? Because he's not giving negative incentive. What is he doing? He's only giving her pos- positive incentive, yes. which means he's putting her on a pedestal. Yes. So I tried one last one time, one last time on Sunday and left her a message on her phone. I really wanted to talk to her, and she wasn't answering, so I left a very direct and candid message on her phone. My desire to talk to her again is what motivated me to be strong and authoritative with my expectation. How do you be strong and authoritative with your expectation, paperclip? By giving her a negative incentive. Which is called? Punishing. By punishing. You don't be strong and authoritative just by talking louder. Or just by stating it more directly. <laughs> okay, these are all pipe dreams. What do you have to do to to be strong and authoritative, Zenic? You have to punish. You must punish. Otherwise, your authority is useless. It means nothing without punishment. 
I spoke in a very clear, deliberate, and direct manner. Good for you. I felt no anxiety this time around. Kelly, it's PF. Listen, I want to talk to you, so call me back sometime. <laughs> One day passed, and then my phone rang. Oh, she called. Woo! She was away over the weekend, but still, she apologized for not answering the phone. We had a good conversation about books, and we were reading, and then I organized another date with her. I don't want to be nervous. Okay, sweet. I organized a date. Kelly, about tomorrow, meet me at 1 p.m. at Central Station, stating expectation. Uh, hey, Pillow. I'm sorry, but, um, my dog died. He got cancer. And then, um, my dad, he, he got in a car wreck. It's really serious. So I gotta, I gotta go to the hospital. Oh, wait, wait. I'm misreading it. Hold on. Hey, I'm sorry, but can we do, can we not do this weekend? I'd like to hang out, but between my cold thing and the trains being out, I just don't feel up to going to Brisbane right now. Um, I was at a loss how to respond to this because it seemed like a legitimate reason to cancel on a date. Yet leaving it so late didn't impress me at all, so I called her. I was a little nervous because this is new to me, but I managed to speak to her in a very clear, direct, and deliberate manner. A very authoritative manner, right, BZS? Uh, I don't think so, but... Care to explain yourself, sir? Yeah, I, well, just up until now, from what we've read, he's not really... I mean, he keeps rewarding her by... said clear, her deliberate, her and direct. Uh... Paper's clear, deliberate, and direct. Yeah. TVP's clear, deliberate, and direct. But he's not, he's not punishing her. He's, he's calling her, you know, he's... Oh, uh, oh, oh, thanks for finally oh, wow. explaining yourself, sir. <laughs> nice. But how the rest went, I do not know. Kelly, it's Billow. Yeah, hey, you're sick? Yeah, I'm sick. I got your message. You need to let me know earlier next time. Stating expectation. Yeah, okay. So how about next weekend? Okay. All right, then. I will call you sometime next week. We'll make the arrangement. Okay. Great. Well, I hope you get better soon, and I'll talk to you next week. Okay. Bye. Okay. All right, let's look at these footnotes here. I got your message. You need to know, let me know earlier next time. Stating expectation. Yeah, okay. Meeting expectation. Like, 90% of her replies are one-word replies. They're either, yeah, okay. So how about next weekend? Stating expectation? Okay. Meeting expectation? What should, by the way, what should be in there? In the brackets? Rewarding by meeting expectation. Yeah, rewarding by meeting expectation or rewarding by agreement. What line? Uh, where she says, yeah, okay, or okay. Oh, okay. Either one. Just put, uh, rewarding. Make sure to put rewarding in there. All right, then. I'll call you sometime next week, and we'll make the arrangement. Okay. Great. Well, I hope we'll see you next... Get better soon. I'll talk to you next week. Rewarding with unwarranted affection, giving her quiet attitude. What? Reward rewarding with unwarranted affection, giving her quiet attitude. Uh, that's wrong. What yeah. goes there? Rewarding with attention. Rewarding Reward. with attention, rewarding with uh, affection, maybe get well soon. <laughs> okay, okay, bye, bye. All right, talking to her in person sounded a little quiet and dejected. I can't figure out if this was because she was sick or maybe something was wrong. What was wrong here? He wasn't punishing her for not meeting his expectation. Is that right, Zenek? Yes, I think so. BZS? He just keeps giving her a more uh, positive incentive. There's no, there's no punishment at all. From what we've seen. And DVP. What everybody else is saying, he's refusing to punish. Uh, Mr. Care Bear. He's too passive. If he wants her to be more open, he should state it. Well, what does he need to do if he wants her to open up? He should say, "How about you? You, you answer me more than in one word." Uh, okay, but there's something missing here. Yeah, I'm not sure. Is this a one-on-one -on -one conversation or is this some text message? Uh, uh, this is on a phone. This is a phone. Uh, is it, uh, What's the problem here? What is he doing when he says, uh, I got your message, but you need to let me know earlier. What is that? BZS? BZS? Okay. What is that? He's, he's kind of providing some... Very small amounts of punishment, like scolding her almost. Like you need right, to let okay, but what is he doing when he says, bit. you need to let me know earlier? What is that? That's a, I would say that's a punishment. That's what is punishment. that? What he says, you need to let me know something. What are you doing, the, uh, the, 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 the Zenic? 
Um, I, I don't know. You need to let me know. What am I doing when I say you need to let me know? Stating an expectation. Yes. What does that mean when I'm stating an expectation? What am I doing? You need to let me know. You're punishing. What does that mean when I'm stating an expectation? You need to let me know. Oh, you're giving a direction. You're, you're moving that direction. What am I doing when I am stating an expectation, DBP? What am I doing? I'm making something. You're making... A... Uh, a direction. It reminds... It starts with a D. Uh, Zenic? Uh, demand. Yes, I'm making demand. What does it say? Uh, what is it? What am I doing when I say, how about next weekend, Zenic? What am I doing? You're making a demand. What about when I say, uh, okay, yeah, so we got demands here. Um, he's making demands. What ha- What do we know about making demands, Zenic? Um, you can't make demands to someone who has no emotional investment in you. Why is she not meeting up with him? Because there's no emotional investment. Which means what? There's no incentive. There's he no hasn't incentive. provided enough incentive. What kind of incentive? Negative incentive. Pleasure. What about here? Here in this conversation? Yes. Who are you asking? Everybody or just... Everybody. What about here? He's yeah, not giving he her a negative incentive. He's not too much uh, negative incentive. He, he's only demanding and not yeah. giving any pleasure. He yeah, there's no pleasure here. Yes. This is all just, hey, meet me here, meet me here. He's already planned the date. She said no. I got an excuse. Here's the excuse. And now he says, okay, well, we'll just reschedule it. Here. It's going to be here. It's going to be next week. What's the problem here? She already doesn't want to go out with him. She doesn't want to go out with him in the first place. Why does she want to go out with him? Because there's yeah, no positive incentives. No positive incentive. This this whole call is reeks of no positive incentive. Why do I want to go out with somebody who just says, here, meet me here. There. You, you need to tell me this. Tell me when. Okay. Do it here. All right. We'll meet you then. All right. Later. Where's the incentive? The whole reason why she's not responding is either he's not punishing from the previous encounter when she was all excited, or he's just not conveying himself. There's no positive incentive, and here it shows me there's no positive incentive. So positive incentive first, then negative incentive is needed. Well, yes, we need both. So he's he's obviously not leading this thing, he's not punishing, and then he's also not rewarding, he's not giving her any reason. There's nothing, there's there's no positive incentive for her to go on this date. She was, okay, okay, bye. What's she planning on doing? Flaking. <laughs> yeah. you have another excuse that when the other yes, day, yes, another excuse. Yesterday a girl I like called me out of the blue, and since I wasn't expecting her call, I was just at a loss of expectations. I want to know how to enforce them, so we just talked. What's his expectation, Zenik? <laughs> I'm not sure. What's his expectation, Mr. Care Bear? Blindfold and not knowing him? What's his expectation? Mr. Care Bear. He can't talk. Uh, Paper, what's his expectation, not knowing him? He wants to get in a relationship with this girl. Yes. Whenever you're talking to a chick and you don't know what your expectation is, your expectation is to get into a relationship with her. Otherwise, why the fuck are you talking to her? So if he already knows his expectation, there should never be a reason when a girl calls you and you don't know what you should do. What should you be doing? Why should you be talking to a girl... Is that it? You should be talking to her because you want to... Oh, I got that. Are you still there? Thanks. Hold on. Okay, there we go. You should be talking to her because you want to get into a relationship with her. Yes. It's the only reason you're talking to her. So it should never be a shock if a girl calls you out of the blue or you're talking to a girl. You should always know why you're talking to her. Even before you talk to her, you should know why you're talking to her. Why do you talk to girls, BZS? To get my needs met. <laughs> so to get answers on a test because you need those answers for the test. To help you with your homework, right? No, to get my, uh, well, to get, you know, you have a need for No, I don't know. That's why I'm asking you. Well, you have, like, sexual needs. You have companionship needs. So you, you enter into a relationship with a woman. To don't get explain it. Answer the question. Why are you talking to a chick? To enter into a relationship with her. Yeah, you're, what other reason are you talking to her for? So whenever you talk to a chick, do you know what your expectation is? Yeah. Okay, so it shouldn't be a mystery. You shouldn't be flying by the seat of your pants. So he's just talking to talk. Oh, I don't know what's going on. I'll just talk. Okay, I can talk all about the all I want about books and politics and blah, blah, blah. I'm sure she's excited. Okay, I can use the screwdriver's hammer I want, blah, 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 blah. But when she calls me out of the blue, it catches me by surprise. I don't know what to do. What do you do when a girl talks to you out of the, she calls you out of the blue? What should talk you be back. expecting? 
just talk back, right? Just talk about politics and talk about math and talk about science and your homework and work. You talk about the conversation about her. You want you talk about her and you, both of you. What are we you talking to her? What are we talking to her for, Zenik? You're talking to her to get into a relationship with her. So what should we be talking about? Politics and religion and all this other stuff. No, talking about the relationship. We can talk about anything, really. Yeah. But Zenik. But if you're, you need to also lead her into the relationship. You have to tell her. Not also. That. You need to get yes. rid of the also. Everything you're talking about is for what, BZS? To build a relationship. Right. So if we're talking about stuff that doesn't build a relationship, should we be talking about it? No, not at all. No. Do you like talking about politics with the DVP? <laughs> do I, do I talk about, I've never talked about politics with DVP. Do you like talking about politics with DVP? <laughs> I, you won. Not. You won. You won. What? Hello, BZS, are you there? Well, I don't like talking about politics too much. Do you like talking about cars with DBP? Uh, I don't really know a lot about cars aside from like making models and stuff like that, so no. What if DBP likes likes cars? Well, then we'll talk about cars. It doesn't really matter what you talk about. What matters? It matters your reaction and your candid, your candid Why? reaction. And... What? Why? Because. Oh. Because why? You're conveying your person. You're because conveying... why? Because you're giving positive consent. Because why? In the relationship. Because it creates order. It creates a direction. Because why? Paperclip. Because you're building a friendship. You're building a friendship. You're building a relationship. It's contributing to that. We're talking about anything we want to as long as it contributes to the relationship. We're not just talking to talk. Do you talk to people where you just say, hey, how's, how's the weather going? What's up, bro? What are you doing, bro? No, it's horrible. <laughs> Why is it horrible? You can talk about anything. Because, because you're not you're not conveying your reaction. I mean, you're just you know, you're being, Chad it's dead not information. Not give a shit about the weather. Yeah, it's, it's dead information. It's, it doesn't really. What's wrong with giving dead information? Sometimes you have to give background about a story. What's wrong with that? Well, you can talk about the weather. Like, you can, as long as you, like, for example, you said, I fucking hate the rain because it, I can't do shit outside. Or just PVP. Like, yes. Is it okay to talk about the weather? Yeah, it's okay to talk about the weather. When is it okay to talk about the weather? When it conveys your person. Like, if you're talking about the rain, you say, oh... Uh, What's the point of talking about the weather, then, Zenik? Oh. The point of... Well, the whole point of talking to them about anything is to get into a relationship with oh. them. Oh. So when I talk about the weather, then... Then you have to find a way to lead it into a relationship. Okay. Did everybody oh. pay attention to what Zenik said? Yeah. So what we're talking about should be directed towards your expectations. So if we're just talking about the weather just to talk about the weather, just to kill time, or just because we're nervous. Is that helping anything? Nope. 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 It's eroding the relationship. If it's not working towards a relationship, it's eroding the relationship. Eroding. Okay. Uh, so he's talking about stuff. Whenever I went on and on in advance, I'm going to talk with her. I consciously map out my expectations. Okay. Good, good. Blah, blah, blah. All right. The other night, I was in the kitchen with the whole family. Nope. Nope. Okay, so this is a whole dysfunctional thing because he's talking about correcting his mom when his mom should have uh, deputy authority from his dad, whose dad's probably mangina and is not able to address this, so it's a whole fucked up situation, so he's wondering if it's okay to do that. Uh, the whole situation is fucked up because his dad isn't in control anyway, so uh, I, I, tentatively, I suppose, he could talk to his mother if she, he doesn't want to talk about, I guess they're talking about sex. He doesn't want to talk about, talk about sex with his mom. All right. Let's get back to his last thing, which is kind of important. Okay, when I look back at my corrections, blah, blah, blah. Okay, he's taking his expectations. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Oh, here we go. I think this is the last one, yeah. Okay, so Pillow says, if you have an ex, if I, ha if an expectation is at first, wait, if an expectation, where is it? If an expectation, blah, blah, blah. Just out of the blue today, I found out there'll be two Swedish girls staying at my place over the weekend. Woo! The surprise caught me off guard. I'm trying to figure out what I should expect from two strangers coming to my house. What should he expect from girls, PZS? Hey, we let... Oh. Shy what? guy? Oh. Wait. What should he expect oh, yeah, from I mean... girls? Yeah, he's got two Swedish chicks coming over. Should he expect them to help with homework or paint the house? What should he expect from these girls? Because I don't know. <laughs> he needs to... Well, first off, he needs to... 
what I'm wondering is, does he have any control over whether or not they come Mr. Care Bear, what should you expect from a girl? <laughs> if you can't talk, he's like, oh, Okay, uh, Mr. Yeah, Zanuck, yeah, no, what, what about two girls? Yeah, yeah. Oh, Mr. Care Bear, you're back? Yeah, I can talk now. What about two girls, two Swedish chicks? Yeah, well, I, if I have two Swedish girls coming over me, I'm expecting a threesome. Yeah, he's oh, expecting yeah, yeah. a threesome. He's expecting to bang some bitches, right? Yes. So what, is he ex- what should he expect if there's two girls coming over? Zenik? <laughs> I was actually going to say threesome as a joke, too. Okay, well, we got past uh, the joke you now. you expect to get into a relationship Yeah, with some kind of relationship, yeah. sexual or otherwise. But the point, that's the whole point he's even talking to him. <laughs> uh, the surprise caught me off guard. I didn't know what to do. I figured this would be a great chance to just blah, blah, blah. But I figured guest in the house, respectful. Okay, so he has expectations, da, da, da. But what I always fear in my interactions with women is all too often when I get a standoffish attitude. From, hey, did he say here, if an expectation is first rejected? Wait, where does it say if an expectation is first rejected? I can't find it. If an expectation is first rejected. God damn it. If and the XP. Oh, it was up above. But I imagine, okay, when I look back at my corrections and my mistakes are clear yet, despite the mistakes, I still managed to get my expectations met smoothly. Did he manage to get his expectations met smoothly? No, no. Well, she said okay. He planned a date. She said okay. Seems smooth to me. I said okay, bye. Okay, bye. Seems smooth to me, paperclip. Oh, okay, never mind. Okay, never mind? Yeah, because I need to look, read things and take it as... Take it at face value. BZS. Take it at face value. She se- it seemed okay to me. He said, okay, fine. Says, seems like his expectation is being met. No, it's, there's, it, they weren't met because she wasn't, I mean, it's one word responses and she's not because being any excitement. What is his expectation? To talk to her and get a yes out of her on the phone? Nope. No. To get on a certain level of excitement or at least uh, submissive, attitude. submissive attitude. What's his expectation? To get a submissive attitude? No. To have her come yeah. out. To have her go on a date with him. And so getting a relationship. Yeah. So is it, so is he get, so he says here, I still managed to get my expectation met smoothly. Is he get his, getting his expectations met smoothly? Paper said know. yes. I changed my mind. Oh, he changed his not mind. Unless he's, not unless he's on a date right now as he was, I mean, as he was. What's his that? expectation again, Zanuck? I forgot. There's so many confusing expectations out there. His expectation is to get into a relationship so with So is her. his expectation getting met smoothly? No. Yeah, I'd say no. Is he delusional? Yes. Of course he's delusional. But I imagine I'm like the basketball player shooting hoops with imperfect technique. Yes, that is exactly the case. He is like a basketball player throwing it over his back and saying, oh, look, it went in the hoop. I must be doing it right. She said, yes, it must be working. If an expectation is at first rejected, like in my case, is the correct thing to just simply to restate it? How do you punish this? Oh, boy. Mr. Care Bear. Yeah, yes. If so an expectation is at first rejected, like in my case, yeah. is the correct thing to do to just simply restate it? Well, he should definitely punish. I mean, he can't restate it, but... What if he punishes and scolds? Should he just restate it again? Yeah. Yes, he should definitely. He should not just... Paper, what if he punishes and scolds? Doesn't get the expectation. Should he just state it again? No. What should he do? He needs to continue punishing until she finally meets his expectation. So what does he need to do, DBP? He needs to... Ah, hiccup. He needs to keep punishing. So let's say... <laughs> Zenik, you get cookies stolen yes. from your jar. Somebody steals a cookie from your jar and you say, Don't steal the cookies, that's bad. DVP says you should keep punishing, so what should you do? Oh. Don't steal the cookies because you're bad? They steal the second time. And you say, Don't steal those cookies. DVP said to keep punishing. So you go, Don't steal the cookies from the jar. And then they take them a third time. You have to increase BGS. the amount of uh, pain. Oh, uh, wait. What was that? You have to increase the amount of pain until it doesn't uh, behavior so, stops. So DVP's answer and uh, Paperclip's answer were total crap, right? Yes. Why were they total crap? Tell them why their answer was total crap. <laughs> uh, your answer was total crap because it... No, you got to address them. DVP and Paperclip. DVP, Paperclip. Your answers were total crap because they were, they were too general. They didn't... Uh, they, they weren't the exact answer. They weren't specific enough. Yes. Why is it important to be specific? Because it provides direction. Yeah. Exactly. So you want to rephrase your answer, either DVP or paperclip? Yes. yes. Okay. Increase. Yeah. If somebody is not meeting your expectation, what do you need to do? I need to increase the punishment. If somebody is not meeting your expectation, what do you need to do, paperclip? I need to increase the amount of punishment. Yes. If somebody's not, if somebody's not. It, 
meeting your expectation, what do you need to do? You increase the level of pain. Uh, hey, uh, Mr. Care Bear, if somebody's not meeting your expectation, what do you need to do? Punish them. Yes. If somebody is still not meeting your expectation, what do you need to do? Increase the amount of punishment. Oh, we got a genius guy in the class. Everybody hear the smart guy here? Yeah. Anybody want to rephrase their answer? Yes. Okay. Paperclip. If somebody's not meeting your expectation, what do you need to do? Punish the individual. If somebody is still not meeting your expectation, then what do you need to do? Increase the punishment oh, given okay. to the individual. So what's the difference between your answer and Mr. Kerber's answer? There is none. What is the difference between his answer and Mr. Kerber's answer, uh, DVP? Kerber's is more specific. He said, what do you do when somebody just snubs your expectation first? And if they keep snubbing it, he said, increase the punishment. Yes, his answer is limited, and that's why it makes sense. That's why the other people's answers, when I just say, what if somebody violates your expectation? You say, increase the punishment. What the fuck does that mean? Yeah. It means nothing. It's non-specific. It's just you're you're jumping ahead because you're not you're not listening to the question. You're not being specific. I'm trying to take you through a progressive answer so we get to the right answer, and you're saying the right thing at the right time, versus you just saying, "Oh, this Professor Plum's throwing a situation at me. I'm just going to give a situational answer." Pay attention in class and give a specific answer that addresses the principle of what we're talking about. When you punish, or when somebody's violating your expectation, the answer is punish. That is specific to the question. When we talk about a future, another violation of the same expectation, then we talk about what principle? Increasing the punishment. The answer is specific to the question. So, do you see the difference? My answer, Ron? Do you see the difference between just saying, "Oh, what do you do when you, uh, what do you do when somebody is violating your expectation?" You go increase the punishment. Okay. What's right. the problem? The problem is, is I'm not answering the question. Yes. You're trying to just go, oh, here's you're, you're doing what students do all the time when they get an answer in the back of the book. They're ready to throw out the answer. They're so happy they know the answer. They're not fucking <laughs> paying attention to the question. Okay. It's not important to know the answer unless you know why the answer exists. <laughs> just because you know the answer is blue doesn't mean anything. You have to be able to apply the answer, which means you have to understand the question. If you don't understand the question, your answer is meaningless, even if it's the right answer. Because what if I change the question? Oh, but I only know the answer. Well, then you're fucked. You have to understand the question in, other, in order to understand the answer. That's why section one of the ebook is there. It's not a mistake that we talk about the problem first. And then just, you know, people are always like, oh, let's just jump to the solution. Why don't we just jump to section two or section three application? Why do we even need section one? Why do we need section one of the ebook? Zenic? Because if you don't understand the question, you can't understand the answer. Yes, your answer is meaningless. Okay, so if an expectation is first rejected, like in my case, like in like in my case, is the correct thing to do to just simply restate the restate the expectation? BZS? Yes? No. No, the answer is to first you punish and then if they keep violating your expectation, you increase the level of pain in your punishment. Yes, yeah, see, that. now that makes that's a sensible answer. That addresses the principle behind how to punish correctly. Your answer is a valid answer. It is meaningful to me versus just saying punish or increase punishment. That is not a lazy answer. That is a good answer. Okay, the next problem was, so I've been nope. thinking long and hard. What's that, paper? No, I saw the face palm and I'm like, oh, okay. this must be bad. So I've been thinking long and hard how to avoid the situation. I think what is at fault is my lack of expression. So I've been working on that by reading a lot more. He's been working on his expression by reading a lot more, trying to make the most of simple thoughts when I talk to people and keeping a vocabulary book. But just as important is my inability to punish the aforementioned dysfunctional behavior. I think what I need is a negative association to go with it, something like this. I want you to contribute to the conversation more. Your standoffish attitude is antisocial. I don't consider it polite. Stating expectation and punishing dysfunctional behavior with negative association? Is this going to work on these two Swedish chicks? They're going to, oh, fuck, I was being antisocial. I'm going to yeah. fucking be polite and start contributing. Is that going to work, uh, no. Mr. Care Bear? No, because they are too dumb to understand what antisocial is. Yes, they're not even going to fucking understand what he's saying. <laughs> What's the problem with what he's saying, uh, DBP? He's rewarding them with an explanation. He's rewarding them with a justification. What's the problem with what he's saying, uh, Paperclip? He's looking at everything. He's Instead of understanding the principles, he's just looking at everything in a, as situations. So he's assuming that he can apply that to every situation he's in. <sighs> Zenik, what's the problem with what he's saying? 
Hmm. I was going to say the same thing as Yeah, DVD, I hope actually. you didn't say the same thing, because that was wrong. Okay. I want you to contribute to the conversation more. Your standoff oh. attitude is antisocial. I don't consider it polite. Oh, he's making a request. He's not telling them. He's requesting it of them. Bees, uh, yes. What's wrong with his answer? What's wrong with that? He doesn't have a relationship with them yet. He's not, he's not providing any incentive. He's just... He's not thinking about why they shouldn't even meet his expectation. He's just... Yeah, why the fuck should they... What the, you what demand me if I just go up to you, hey... Paperclip, I say hello, paperclip. And you say? Yep. Paperclip, hello. Yo. I want you to contribute to the conversation, paperclip. Yo is stand, is a standoffish attitude. It's antisocial. I don't consider it polite. Give me more positive incentive. What's wrong with my answer to you? You're demanding, you're demanding positive incentive from me, but you're not giving me positive, positive incentive. Yeah, why the fuck should that? you answer more than yo to me? I just said hello to you, and you said yo back. <laughs> Now all of a sudden you're antisocial because you're not meeting my expectation? <laughs> Sucks. Now you see the face palm. Now you see Professor Plum. Motherfucker. <laughs> Motherfucker. What's the problem with these saying, uh, I've been thinking long and hard how to avoid the situation. I think the fault is my lack of expression. Oh. <laughs> so I've been working on that by reading a lot more. Okay. What's wrong with this uh, sentence and a half here, uh, Mr. Care Bear? Um, yeah, right, same problem you have. BZS, what's wrong with this sentence and a half here? I mean, he's, the first sentence, he's got it, he at least understands that he does need to give incentive okay. to his expression, but then the, the other sentence, he's not looking at training, he just wants to read. Yeah, I'm just gonna read a book. It. Oh, look at my expression's improving, I'm reading a book. And that's not gonna help with his expression at What's all. gonna he's help him, Zenic? He's asking, how can I avoid failure? He's not asking, how can I succeed? Zenic, what's wrong with the problem, with these, uh, sentences here? It's wrong because uh, if you read, it's not going to improve your expression. It might improve your vocabulary, but not your expression. If you want to improve your expression, you need to talk with people. Oh, that's why we say show up to class, or at least talk to somebody in your vicinity. Practice. <laughs> you need to practice. You need to train. Reading is not going to help you. It's Yes, it's going to uh, maybe help your structure or help you express yourself in a more uh, in a more thorough way, but without actually practicing it with somebody else, not going to happen. Not going to happen. Last questions or comments? I really like this podcast. I really like you. I have a question. Yes. And okay, so one of my posts, you told me to bring this up during class. Yes. And what what was quoted is the following: My expectation is for her to call me back, but see, this is where I'm confused because I used to be strict about having people meet my expectations. I then decided to experiment by rewarding more and ignoring having others meet some some of my expectations. Now I went back to how I was before, but I'm getting the same result. Which is the girl doesn't want to meet the expectation. Well, I, I think we think... answered it on this podcast. Were you paying attention yeah. to the podcast? Never mind. Okay, never mind. All right, thank you guys. It's been another great podcast. We'll see you next time.